Um, currently, the invasive pat-down searches are random and not based on risk assessment? No, actually, they are based on intelligence that we know specifically from Christmas Day, Abdul Matab, and the way he concealed that device. There are some random uh, pat-downs, uh, pat if that's what you're referring to, but, but it is based on the intelligence. Right. So I guess this little girl would be part of the random pat-down. This is a little girl that from Bowling Green, Kentucky, one of my constituents. They're still quite unhappy with you guys, as well as uh, myself and a lot of other of America that thinks you're, you've gone overboard and you're missing the boat on terrorism because you're uh, doing these invasive searches on six-year-old girls. Uh, the same week, thank you, the, sa the same week that uh, this happened, I got a call from another neighbor of mine in Bowling Green. A little boy had a broken foot and crutches. They didn't want to go through all the screenings. They took the crutches off and the broken the, the cast, and he wanted to hobble through on his broken foot, and his dad was helping him. TSA said, back away, back away. Then he had to go through the special search because he had previously had a cast on, even though the cast went through the, the belt. When the dad comes close, they say, back away, back away. If you don't back away, you won't fly. This kind of gets back to this whole idea of, you know, what are we willing to do? What are we willing to give up as a country? In your interview with ABC News, you said, I see flying as a privilege. Well, there are those of us who see it otherwise, the Supreme Court included. In Sciennes versus Roe in 1999, says that although the word travel is not found in the text of the Constitution, yet the constitutional right to travel from state to another is firmly embedded in our jurisprudence. Justice Stewart went on to say in Shapiro versus Thompson, that the right to travel is so important that it is assertable against private interference as well as governmental action, a virtually unconditional personal right guaranteed by the Constitution to us all. Now, this isn't to say we don't believe in safety procedures, but I think I feel less safe because you're doing these invasive exams on the six-year-old. It makes me think you're clueless, you know, that you think she's going to attack our country and that you're not doing your research on the people who would attack our country. It absolutely must involve a risk assessment of those who are traveling. And the fact that she's being patted down and I don't feel comfortable really with your response that we're no longer doing, we may be doing some risk assessment, we're still doing random pat-downs. I think you ought to get rid of the random pat-downs. The American public is unhappy with them. They're unhappy with the invasiveness of them. The internet's full of jokes about the invasiveness of your pat-down searches. And we ought to really just consider is this what we're willing to do? The other thing is, is that while we're doing that, there's examples where we've had letdowns. Uh, when Faisal Shahzad got on the plane, the alleged Times Square bomber, he was on the watch list. Everybody said, oh, it was the airline that let us down. Well, he had to go through TSA screening. TSA screening, they, it wasn't a long time, but there were 10 hours, and we ought to be able to react. His name was on the watch list, and he went right through TSA. I mean, is the TSA looking at flight manifest? Are you doing background research of people getting off and on planes? Are we targeting who we're looking at that might attack us? I really get the idea that because our approach is so politically correct that it has to be so universal, six-year-olds and 90-year-olds and people in wheelchairs. You know, you probably saw in the newspaper the other day the, uh, the, the young man who's mentally handicapped who had a plastic hammer. Because you're telling people to fit this in a box and do this, tell your agents to do this, they took away something that the boy had had for 29 years. And if you've ever dealt with a child with autism, there are certain things that comfort them and keep them calm. And to do that is just, it really it just shows that no one's thinking. You're, they're, they're given this rote automaton message to crack down, pat people down, do this, and that if we're not thinking about catching terrorists, I mean, it should be about police work. I mean, most of these people have, uh, you know, police work would catch them. The, the hijackers who came here were overstaying their welcome. They were on student visas, but they weren't going to school. We need to be doing better police work and less of the universal giving up of our, our freedom to live our life the way we'd like to live, uh, live our life. But I'd like you to comment a little bit about the right to travel as a privilege and then a little bit about um, you know, the idea of the universality of uh, insult that we're being given versus targeting this towards people who might attack us. Thank you. Well, th thank you, Senator. You've raised a number of important issues. Uh, let me take them, try to take them in order. In terms of the pat down on the six-year-old, that, of course, is something that 
that is done based on uh, intelligence that is gathered from around the world, not as to a specific individual, uh, but if there is an anomaly detected or for some reason the resolution can't be done other th than through a pat-down, that's what's done. Unfortunately, we know that terrorists have used children under, 10 or under 12 years old as uh, suicide bombers uh, in other locations, not in aviation, but there's been two 10-year-olds used. We also know the two uh, grandparents, one grandmother, one grandfather, 64 years old in both situations have been used as, or they have chosen to be suicide bombers. So it's, it is informed by the intelligence. I agree with you, we need to be smarter in how we go about doing things. We need to use some more common sense. When TSA was stood up nearly 10 years ago, it was given a mission, don't let this happen again. And the men and women of TSA have taken that very seriously. What I hope to be doing under my tenure in Secretary Napolitano, what, what we are working on is this risk-based security initiative to say, yes, let's take what we know, some of the, the passenger manifest information, especially those who are willing to share information with, with us, so we can make better judgments, better informed decisions as to this particular person, what risk do they pose, and so how can we expedite their screening if they are not seen as a risk. So we're doing a number of things. I'd be glad to provide some more detailed briefings to, to you in a closed setting right. on that. Right, and just one follow-up on that. I mean, 10 years is a long time. We've been, we've been a decade now. We don't have a frequent flyer program. We don't have a trusted traveler program. Um, you know, I know most, I, I, you know, I don't want this to be against the TSA. I know most of the agents and, and I think they're good people. But at the same time, you know, they're wasting their time. All these congressmen and senators go back and forth. But to be so fair, we got to search all of them. We know them by name a lot of times, and we're getting the same pat-down search as everybody else's, to be fair. But so are the frequent travelers. My brother-in-law is on two or three planes a week. He's an Air Force grad. He's, you know, unlikely, really. He's not a terrorist, okay? And so we're wasting time on all these people. And if, But I really think... As far as the privacy issue, let let a private company and private you know encourage a private company. There were beginnings of this. Well, let's turn it over. Let's have a frequent flyer program that you can voluntarily participate in. But let's get it done. Thank you. Thanks, Senator Paul. 